said that they wanted to be here and, and uh, we're going to be recording. So, um, and just for now, uh, Laura, I'm going to mute your audio, but feel free to, you know, raise your hand or unmute it if you have a, um, that way we can get, I think, a good signal going. So, and just to let everybody know, um, I'm Jill Allison Bryan of Creative Oasis Coaching, and I want to thank you so much for joining me for this um, New Year, New You discovery session. Uh, it's kind of funny because I really hadn't seen the phrase, like not like it's the most original phrase on the planet, but New Year, New You until I came up with this, I did it, I put it out, and then I saw it everywhere. I was like, oh, everybody on the planet has a new year, new you thing. But that's okay. Um, because those are all going to speak to people in, in different ways. And it also just goes to, goes to show you, you know, there's something out there in the zeitgeist. We are looking for uh, ways to really tap into our, 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 our authentic self and, and, and be uh, our, our authentic self. So um, I want to congratulate you, um, Heidi and Laura, for sure, for being here live and for everybody who's watching the recording later on today, um, for just giving yourself permission to take a little time to do some soul searching and some creative self-care. And, and we're going to be doing that through very low pressure um, creative expression, via the, the coloring page, mandala, um, exploration, and, and hopefully conversation. So, um, and I want you to know too that, that if you're here with me today now, or if you're watching this today, I'm going to offer you a special bonus later that's only for, for today through midnight. So that's another bonus for showing up today or watching this today. Um, we've already kind of talked about the fact that if Zoom is really easy to use, but if it happens to freeze up or something, you can just restart like jump off the link and come back in that usually does it or uh, make sure you have some uh, if you're in a different browser have other browsers and applications closed and that usually helps too um, hopefully you were able to uh, like Heidi and Laura print out your uh, three-step guide and your coloring mandala page if you did not um, I didn't have the link for the mandala coloring page frame on the first email. So if you didn't get that, you can go back and look in your email. Uh, uh, the last two that I sent just in the la this morning, they will have a link uh, to that if you want to print that out. And as I suggested a little bit earlier, if you're going to use like markers or watercolors with that, it's kind of nice to print that out on a color box just because it makes it, uh, absorbs it. Uh, a little better. And I see Stephanie has joined us. Hello, Stephanie. And I'm, I don't see your beautiful face, but I'm going to mute your audio because I hear your, <laughs> I hear something going on there right now. And I see Nancy has joined us. Um, and if, if you want to, uh, uh, Stephanie and Nancy, if you want to just kind of pop in in the chat room at, at the very uh, bottom of the screen, you see there's a chat bubble and that'll pop up a chat on the side, on um, the right side, and just let us know where you're calling from. Uh, we have somebody here from Charlotte, somebody here from Taos, I'm in Dallas, um, and just kind of start our virtual group here together. Um, and, and what I like to always share in my live and online uh, groups, something I call a dive right in creative experience. So in this instance today, it's this um, mandala frame coloring page. And the idea behind a dive right in creative experience is, you know, if, if, you re if you've been um, following Creative Oasis for any time or if, if you've heard me write about it, speak about it, teach about it, you know that I think that, that our Creative Oasis is really anything that, that makes us, uh, that energizes and delights us and, and gives it, puts us in the zone, makes time fly for us. So it could be a stereotypical creative activity like some sort of art activity or music or dance or writing, but it doesn't have to be. It can be gardening. It can be cooking. It can be meditating. It can be learning a new language. I mean, it's just anything that lights you up. Um, but I do think that, that giving ourselves permission to use um, some low pressure kind of creative art uh, activities and experiences really is a great way to energize all of our creative oasis moments. And it's a, it's a great thing for us to be able to do while we're talking about it and thinking that way. I don't consider myself um, like a visual artist, like I could never have painted the painting behind me that my good friend painted, <laughs> but I do like to use the creative supplies and especially in these kind of easy uh, dive right in ways like a coloring page. Um, and so Nancy's here from Minnesota. 
and Stephanie from Dallas too. So we got people from all over the place. That's great. Um, and it's also up to you if you, some people really like to have something to do with their hands while we're kind of talking and working through the guide and having discussion. Some people would rather focus on the discussion and, and leave this for later, so I'll, I'll leave it up to you. I uh, will say that if you'll kind of leave this portion in the middle blank, we're going to do something with that at the very end of the call. Um, so any questions? So far, comments, if you have a question or comment and I can't see your beautiful face, <laughs> and so I can't see you wave because you have a comment, if you just um, type it in the chat box, I will try to keep an eye on that and I'll be happy to unmute you and we can have conversation um, and I'll be happy to answer any questions as well. So, so the new year, new you discovery guide is just kind of taking a, a moment and congratulations again on giving yourself some time to kind of really think, you know, we get into, we all do this, we get into habits, we get into, sometimes our habits become ruts, we get into the thing that we're doing again and again and again every day, we wake up and we just kind of go through the motions and so taking a moment, taking a little time to stop and, and reflect and say, okay, what worked well? What am I liking about this in my life right now? And what do I want to change? Um, I think we don't do that that often. You know, we don't take that, that time out to really kind of ask ourselves, am I being the person that I wanna be? Am I really truly doing the things that I want to do? And so this is hopefully gonna give you a little opportunity to do that uh, in a supportive community with other people who are, are wanting to take that time to do the same kind of thing. And the first um, step is to that I like to do is sh shine the light on the good, which means you know, often we'll have goals, we'll have intentions, we'll have things that we do in life, and then once we do them, whether it's something big or small, we check them off the list and we keep and we move on. And so I think taking a, just a little time even to celebrate what we've done well, what we've done right for ourselves um, is really important. And I don't think that we do that very often. So um, I have in my private membership group, the Creative Oasis Collective, we do that every week. We start with an intention, we kind of check in midweek, and at the end of the week, we celebrate um, what we've, what's gone well. And I think that when you celebrate what's gone well and when you even take the time to recognize it um, that's motivating that feels good that that helps you to keep on the path and keep going when we just keep checking things off the list and adding more stuff to the list um, it's a little oppressive it's a little just you know it, it does it's not very motivating or inspiring so this number one in the step is shine the light on the good and the first prompt is the most soul-satisfying creative experience I had in 2016 was and so whatever that was for you. And I want to also take this moment to say that if you didn't necessarily have a very soul satisfying creative experience in 2016, or if that's what your aha was with this prompt, that's okay. That's what this is about too. It's just about having that awareness thinking, oh my God, I didn't, <laughs> I don't think I did have a soul satisfying creative experience in 2016 and I, I don't want that to happen again in 2017. So I really want you to feel okay and I want to normalize and say you're not alone if you, that was your aha, that's okay. Um, and if that's the case, then you can go ahead and skip to kind of thinking a little bit about what that you might want that to be in 2017. Um, it's all about the awareness. So does anybody have, um, something that they would want to share that you think was for you, your most soul satisfying creative experience in 2016. And again, you can either uh, raise your hand or um, Nanda, I see you joined us, but I can't, I cannot see your smiling face, but I can see that you're there. So um, you can, if you want to type in the chat room on the side, the little chat bubble at the bottom of the zoom will, will pop up a chat box at the right and you can tell us where you're calling from. And if you have any questions or if anybody wants to share in the chat room, um, or talking to just say, what was your soul satisfying creative experience of 2016? Or did you have the aha that maybe that's something you need to work on for 2017? Ah, Stephanie says walking the lake three to four times a week. Yeah, we're very lucky to, to live near a, a beautiful small lake here in Dallas and that's, and whenever I get to the to the lake, it feels like uh, 
it feels like I'm on vacation and, and it's so cool to remind myself I live here. I can have this experience whenever I want it. And that's a great example of a creative oasis moment, right? Just walking at the lake and experiencing that as a creative experience and giving yourself credit for that. Um, that's the other thing about uh, creativity and, and, I, and creative oasis moments is they don't have to produce something necessarily. So, you know, you don't have to end with um, I've made this painting or I've colored this coloring page. It can actually just be the experience. I walked by the lake and I had that experience and that experience enriched my life in a creative way. So thanks for sharing that one, Stephanie. And Heidi says in June, I found a lovely, Oh yeah. Baby Butler's webinar conference. It started you on the creative journey. Yeah. I was so blessed to be part of that. It was amazing. The soul spa summit. I was so sad that we lost baby, the baby this year. But um, she did so much amazing work while she was here. Um, just that last summit in itself, um, she connected so many people. Uh, she started one of my clients on a journey where she's now um, getting certified by Chris Seidel for creative arts expression um, therapy. So just amazing. Uh, ah, Laura says, watching birds at my bird feeder. Yeah, another wonderful, like taking the time to, to you know, to really... Um, Give yourself credit for doing that because how many people stick up a bird feeder and don't don't look at it, you know, or, or think, oh, I'm, it becomes a have to. I need to put bird seed out there instead of enjoying the moment. <laughs> Hi, cutie, whoever, whoever's there with Heidi. Um, and Nanda's from Holland. Hi, Nanda. And you're getting to know the joy in your creativity again. Oh, that's wonderful. That's great. We, I think you might have uh, popped on after we were talking about the fact, Manda, that creativity can come in so many shapes and forms. It can be art and music and writing, but it can also be, um, it can be taking a walk by the lake. It can be uh, exploring. So um, yeah, that, that's, I'm, I'm glad that you all were able to, to realize that. I'm trying to think about my soul satisfying creative experience for the last year. Um, I think was giving myself permission. I know what it was. I giving myself permission to, I was doing some decluttering and I found some old classical sheet music from when I was in middle school. So we're talking decades old <laughs> sheet music. And I uh, started playing it again. I, I just, it was with the question. I wonder if I could do this. I wonder if my brain and fingers would remember what to do. And, and I did. And it was so joyful, so fun. And I think part of the reason for that, the aha for me was when I was in eighth grade or seventh grade and somebody was telling me I needed to or had to practice this and learn this. I mean, it was probably fun on some level, but also a very big have to do. And I was, and now I was just doing it for me. Nobody was going to grade me on it. Nobody was going to, you know, tell me I had practiced enough or hadn't practiced enough. And that, that whole free, freeing experience of playing the piano and making music came back to me. So I, that, that was probably one of my most soul satisfying creative experiences that I allowed myself to, to have several times um, in 2016 and that I would definitely like some more of in 2017. So the second prompt is I felt the most like myself or the me I'd like to be um, when I, and then whatever comes up for you. So this is really about, you know, showing up authentically as who you want to be in life. Um, anybody have anything on that you'd be willing to share? Sitting on the beach painting with watercolors, Heidi says. Ooh, that sounds... Sitting on the beach doing anything <laughs> or doing nothing <laughs> is one of my favorite soul-satisfying creative experiences. So, yeah. but um, And, you know, I will admit that I'm guilty of um, doing things like going to the beach and taking maybe a little watercolor set or something with me to do and then not doing it. And I don't know why that is. I did some, I did go to the beach last summer and I did some, some coloring with my mom and with my little niece. But, um, but I, yeah, I, I love that, um, that I'm going to be going to the beach soon. So maybe, maybe I'll do some of that. That sounds like a, a, a good one. And you felt like yourself when you were doing that. Um, anybody else have a, a feeling that, you know, of when you felt the most like yourself or the self you want to be? Um, I think, I think for me, 
Ah, Nanda, being without doing anything, just being. Ah, I love that. And she capitalized the B-E. So yes, um, I will say that my meditation practice, which is what that puts me in the mind of, Nanda, has uh, strengthened in the last six months. And um, the visualization that I love the most when I'm meditating is uh, I visualize myself being held by the moment. So you, you've heard the phrase like sitting in the moment, being in the moment. And I visualize the moment as a big pair of arms or hands holding me. And um, what a treat. The, the thing about experiences like that and breathing is that the aha of I can do that anytime I want to. And it's free. I can sit here. I can breathe. But but really ha having that awareness of what a wonderful experience that can be, and and confirmation from somebody like Nanda saying that's that's when I really feel the most like my authentic self is is beautiful. So thank you for sharing that, Nanda. Laura, Laura says watching the clouds and being slow enough to start drawing. Oh yeah, nice watching the clouds and being slow enough to start drawing. Um, we talked, uh, I talked a little bit about, or we, in, in the lead up to this, the idea of all the roles that we play in life, you know, and especially as women, uh, I think, you know, we, we have the built in roles of probably, you know, mother, uh, daughter, caregiver, perhaps partner or spouse, employee or employer, community member, maybe uh, some sort of a church member, um, all these different roles, schools, um, all the roles that we play in our life. Um, so considering those or even the role that you play in your creative life specifically, what's one role that you loved playing in 2016? And it doesn't have to be you know, any of those that I just talked about. It can be something else. But something that when you think about it, there's no hesitation that you really loved that role. I can honestly say that, um, and this is just true, it's just my passion, is, is, is coaching and, and, and leading um, creative coaching groups and one-on-one -on -one coaching uh, is, is, is one of the roles that I love, probably only second to being a mom to my awesome daughter. Um, so that feels really good. And, and Heidi teaches art. Uh, uh, Stephanie being Anna's power partner. So that's somebody that she's partnered up with to, for accountability and inspiration. Um, maybe some energy work, I think. Uh, Nancy says, cheerleader for others in my songwriting group. Oh, that's great. A songwriting group. That's awesome. I don't know if you know Nancy. I'm a singer-songwriter as, as well. Um, Stephanie, friend role. Yeah. <laughs> Heidi, wish I lived near you, Nanda. Being a trainer, helping people remember what's important in their life. Absolutely. And don't you find, Nanda, I don't know if you find this, but I always find that it's so, uh, the give and take of it is just, um, like, it, it, as much as I'm helping somebody else or coaching somebody else, I'm getting that back in spades. A, it's a reminder to me, anything that I'm supporting them around is a good reminder to me to, to, to show myself that same kind of um, love and care and, and gentleness and accountability. Um, and so it's very re reciprocal. I love that. Um, and Laura, seeing my daughter at Christmas, seeing my daughter at Christmas is awesome and being a mom again. Ah, yeah, that sounds, that's great. So, so we started, you know, with, with kind of looking at, and which is such an important thing, I think, to do, to looking at what works, uh, what's gone well for us, and giving ourselves some credit for that before moving on to thinking about possibilities. But then that's a, a wonderful next step is to kind of ponder uh, the possibilities. Ah, Nanda says, true, everything I say to someone else, I seem to be saying to myself. Yeah, and it's just like this bonus. <laughs> It's a bonus of, of, of teaching and coaching, I think. Um, so the first prompt under the idea of pondering the possibilities is going back to or sticking with these idea of, of roles that we play in our life. Sometimes uh, we get, like we talked about earlier, stuck in ruts with roles um, because, um, you know, we've always played them. And so we just 
never consider that maybe we don't have to anymore. And I wrote a post a few weeks ago about ditching the superwoman cape. And that seemed to kind of resonate with a lot of people. And I think that for me, I wasn't even doing this like, you know, on purpose. I didn't think I'm being superwoman. I just some, a friend pointed out to me that that's kind of what was, was going on a little bit. And when I realized it and I had the awareness of it and the awareness that I wanted to, to drop that and I didn't want to feel like I had to be a superwoman and do everything for everybody all the time. Wow. The sense of freedom was amazing. So for me, I can definitely say that in 2017, a role that I want to release is the need uh, to feel like I'm a superwoman, or that I have to do it all or, or that I'm, you know, expected to be there for everybody all the time, 24 seven. Um, that doesn't mean that I'm going to be a hermit and not do things for people and not support people and not be there for my parents and my daughter. It just means uh, lowering the expectations and the pressure of doing that perfectly 24 seven all the time. So does anybody else have a, a role that really feels like you would like to release it in 2017? Again, this can be just in general life or on your creative journey. Everybody might be good where they are and, and not, not wanting to release any, uh, any roles. And that's, that's fine too. Uh, one Stephanie being the family housekeeper. Yeah. Yeah. So maybe in that instance, it's asking for more help or expecting more help, um, in, in, in keeping the house uh, straight and clean, uh, as the mother of a teenager, <laughs> I think I can, I can relate to that too. I could use a little bit more of that. Uh, another role that I um, uh, kind of let go of intentionally several years ago and, and had to kind of add some power and intention behind that again recently was the person in the family who makes everything okay so if there's a problem going on between this person and that person go to Jill and she'll and she'll be the middleman and kind of work it out between you that's a lot of pressure um but it's you know it kind of seems like it's a role that some of us are born into or it kind of gets thrust upon us and um I decided to kind of let that go and then kind of tell, you know, be like, it's not, I, I, again, it's not on me to try to make everybody else get along. Okay. Or uh, be the Julie McCoy of our family who kind of figures out, you know, the social direction of what we're going to do for everything. Um, and it's been kind of freeing to let that go. Um, and interesting to see what falls between the cracks, but that's okay. Practicing being okay with that is, is part of it. Um, Laura says, trying to let go of perfectionism. Yeah, so the role of somebody who's perfect all the time or who strives to be perfect all the time. And that's really something that we spend a lot of time, um, as you know, Laura, you know, working through and, and coming up with, with ways to, to release that block um, through Kaizen News. And Nanda says, I believe I want to let go of the roles all together and see life as a whole. Um, ooh, that's the first role I want to get rid of is the role of victim. Yeah. And become accountable for my whole life. Yeah. And even Nanda, even just having that, again, having that awareness of um, wanting to release that is truly a first step. I mean, we can't make any changes in our lives until we have the awareness that we want to make the change. So I hope that you can give yourself credit for that because that's really, um, that's really a wonderful first small step to know that you want to release that, that role uh, as victim. Um, so another, another positive possibility to ponder, <laughs> I didn't mean for the alliteration to pop out like that, but is one creative experience that I know I want more of in 2017. Um, so this could be something that you're currently doing and you want more of. This could be something that you, um, haven't done at all, but it's just kind of floating around in your mind as something you would really love to spend some time with, or you used to do it maybe, and you dropped it and you'd like to incorporate it or weave it back into your life a little bit. Um, for me, uh, I would say more of the music, more of the sitting down and playing music solely for the pleasure of playing music and also, um, 
I tend to use the phrase making bad art, and I think that's a negative phrase. I should, I, that's not what I mean to say. I mean, making imperfect art, making art for the fun of making art, using creative supplies to make stuff, not worrying about what the end product is going to be. It's not going to be a gift necessarily that I give somebody, or it's not going to be hung on a wall, definitely not going to be something that I'm trying to sell, but just for the fun of kind of like with the coloring pages, just for the fun of, of doing that. And I have ideas um, for some sculptural kind of 3D box art that I've been playing with uh, recently and really to just practice what I preach and give myself permission to come into this creative space and play with art um, and that kind of a experience for 2017. I know I want more of that. Anybody else can think, can you think of a, you know, a creative experience that you know you want more of in 2017? And this can be a personal creative experience or um, or Nancy improve art more songwriting ooh online challenge is to do it quickly and perfectly just do it yes I love that Nancy um, more retreat time mm, yeah that always sounds good uh, whether it's personal retreat or um, retreat with other people um, yeah, the, what I love about the the two things too that that Nancy said, improv art and um, online challenges, doing things quickly and imperfectly. So so giving ourselves the opportunity to experience these things that we really enjoy doing, but in a way that it lowers the pressure, so it doesn't have to be, um, you know, oh I'm gonna, it's a big, I have to write this song, and it's and there's a lot of pressure, and you know, not even worrying about if anybody else is going to hear it at first, and just doing it for the joy of, of doing it and starting somewhere along those lines. Anybody else have any other creative experience that you know you want more of in 2017? Ah, yeah, for the play, not work, not perfection, it's play. In fact, Nancy, the, it's many of the people that I've worked with over the years who were musicians or who wanted to get back to their music, and that's what we were doing the coaching around, a phrase that helped them kind of um, lower the pressure was that they were going to get to play around with their music rather than play music. And just adding that one word to it, kind of changing the phraseology a little bit, transformed it for them to, oh yeah, I can play around with the piano, I can play around with the guitar. Um, Laura, use the Kaizen Muse creativity principles and help others find their joy. Yeah, definitely. And, and, and using them for ourselves too, Laura, right? Or my, remembering that we can use those for ourselves and drawing more. Mm -hmm. Great. So the last uh, prompt in this section is, is it may be, it seem like, ah, it's kind of a big tall order, but here's the idea behind it. The, the prompt is, in my wildest, best dreams of 2017, I see myself, and then however you see yourself, either in general or on your creative journey. And the idea behind giving ourselves this opportunity to, to think about something like this, to think about what we would be doing and who we would be in our wildest, best dreams, is to kind of open up um, the possibility just a little bit more uh, than we have before for what's in what's possible inside us. Um, it kind of goes back to what we were talking about earlier with the, you know, you do the same thing you've always done, you'll get the same thing you've always got. I mean, that's a guarantee. And yet taking that time to really stop and say, what, what else is possible? What else is out there for me? What, what do I want? I don't know about you all, and it's hard for me to, to tell, you know, because we haven't met and I can't see your beautiful faces, but <laughs> I'm 52. And so I am really at a point in my life where I'm realizing it's not a, a total aha, like I've always known this, but you know, everybody's time is finite on the planet. As you start to get to 52 and above, you think, hmm, oh, that's for reals. <laughs> You know, I really, I really need to think about um, how do I get to spend uh, the next part of my life, the next chapter of my life, and, and do I want to spend it being a person and doing things that I've always done just because I've always done them? What do I really want? Who do I really want to be? And so I think answering that question and taking the time to kind of ponder that question for a minute, in my wildest, best dreams in 2017, I see myself. Um, that opens it up. That that opens up the possibility of um, uh, 
what that might look like. So um, if it overwhelms you at all, just, you know, I, I would suggest just using it and, you know, being as playful with it as possible or being as lighthearted with it or just, you know, maybe that sounded a little deep what I was just talking about, about you. We only have so much time left, but, but it's true. And so it's like, what, what is the joy? What is the, how do you see yourself? So, um, uh, Stephanie says, I'm lighter, laugh more. Yeah. Oh, I'm, I'm definitely all about, you know, I think right now being with people, um, who, who are light and, and, and who laugh more and who, and who want to have conversations and experiences and, um, you know, definitely watching t to not be on that kind of a uh, rote treadmill where you get up in the morning and you do the same thing every day. And then maybe you go home at night and you watch TV and you go to sleep and you get up and you do it over again, but having um, more experiences. I think that's something big for me is like more going to art shows, concerts, speakers, having experiences, uh, more uh, less stuff, more experiences has been a mantra of mine for several years now, and it's becoming more and more true every year, but that's really something for 2017 for me. Um, and I see, you know, a lot of, a lot of sharing this, I guess, in 2017 for me is so making art for art's sake, making music for music's sake, um, and just offering more and more possibilities for other people to do that as, as well. Um, but I really want to make sure and, um, uh, practice what I preach. Uh, and so, you know, I want to model that behavior of, of doing it for the joy of, of it and really giving, helping people give themselves permission to, to have these creative oasis moments for the joy of it. Um, Nanda says feeling at home in life. That's a beautiful phrase. Spending time with women who encourage and inspire each other. Oh, that that's really for, you know, me too. And I, and I, I love that you've set that said that as an intention because, um, for example, I talked about it earlier, but my, I have a small private, um, membership group, the creative Oasis collective. And it really is uh, great to have a group of women who, um, have general accountability, lift each other up a place that you can go and share your creative Oasis moments and know that they'll be celebrated because that's the other thing in our lives. Not everybody in our life gets it. Like, <laughs> you know, um, and, and they might, there might be some judgment. There might be, you know, uh, are you wasting your time? What are you doing? What, what good does that do you kind of a thing? And so it's really nice to find a group of, of people who do understand the, the importance and the power in that. Um, and Laura says, embracing the present moment, definitely sharing fun with others, continuing creating community. Yeah. Um, I would say I agree with all of those, or I can, I can relate to all of those, Laura, and especially, uh, embracing the present moment I have found. And I shared this in the collective. I think it was just a, a week or a few weeks ago uh, for me personally, when I'm feeling, uh, stress or there's a lot of upheaval in my life or the news freaks me out um, or anything like that, the fastest way for me to come back to calm, to come to some feeling of being okay is to remind myself to be in the present moment. Um, and to not, you know, it's, it's just, it's the whole idea of if you're worrying about what's already happened, nothing can be changed. If you're worrying about what has not happened yet, there's no telling if it's going to happen or not. So that's kind of wasted energy. But when we're really here in the moment right now, um, being present for ourselves or for, in this example, for, for each other on this call, uh, it just lends a whole air of calm, um, to the, to to our life. So I'm glad that you brought that up as well. So these are some beautiful things for in your wildest and, and, and best dreams to see for yourself. And, and I'm really, it's encouraging too. I love the fact that, that, a, you know, creative um, outlets are being expressed to like drawing and making music, but they're, that we're also talking about other ways that we can experience um, creative joy because, you know, in, in my, uh, the way I feel about it and I think the way a lot of people feel about it is, is your life. Our life is our greatest creative endeavor. 
right? And, and I thought something clicked for me years ago when I first started uh, coaching after I'd been certified as a Kaizen Muse creativity coach. And when that light bulb went off that, oh, it's my whole life. It's not just whether or not I write a song and perform it. It's not um, just if I make a, a photo album that's creative uh, for my parents for a gift. It's like those are projects. Those are creative experiences that I can have, but it's my entire life. It's, it's choosing to have more experiences and less stuff. It's, um, you know, on some level, it's like how you accessorize. I mean, if you, you know, if you wear like a pair of earrings or the way you dress or the way you set your table, you know, it's the way you live your life, which is, is not to say it's not about spending money or, or having certain things. It's just about how you're expressing yourself in your day to day um, living. And for me, when I had that aha moment of my life being my greatest creative expression, um, that was, it was empowering and it was also just kind of delightful. I, I think it brings to mind one of my favorite quotes, which um, is an Einstein quote. He said, there's two ways you can, I'm paraphrasing, but there's two ways you can live your life. One is, is as if everything is a miracle and the other is as if nothing is. And I feel the same thing is true if you substitute um, uh, miracle for creative, like two ways you can live your life. One as if everything you do can be a creative expression and the other is as if, if nothing is. And I feel like um, if you think, if I think of it that way, it just opens up the possibilities to me uh, and makes the whole thing more fun. We have the choice to make our, you know, to step into authentically who we want to be and live our lives the way we want to um, and, and have that, that bonus of feeling that way in our lives. Um, so then, so these things that we've come up with, these, you know, looking into the roles that we do want to embrace, the creative experiences that we do want more of, the things that we also want to release out of our life, the roles and the pressure and, and the, the blocks that we want to release. One of the ways that, one of my favorite ways um, to make that happen is permission. So the third step in this discovery process is giving yourself permission. And so um, the first prompt of this is one way I might find support as I step into the me that I want to be is, so where in your life can you see finding support? Um, I've already mentioned, you know, a couple times I have, of course, I have friends that are very supportive. Um, I have the, the, the group that I have, the Creative Oasis Collective. Uh, we, as I said, we support each other in our online face book group and then we, we check in there several times a week by setting our intentions and doing a midweek check-in and then having our celebration um, at the end of the week um, when we meet three times a, uh, a month um, and then something that we actually share and I do I share these with my one-on-one um, -on -one clients as well and they'll be a part of the discovery um, sessions that I'm that I'm going to be sharing soon are called creative oasis dates. And basically that's a, it's a creative accountability date. And they're so amazing because it's how they work is if you're not familiar, it's like if we were going to have a creative oasis date tomorrow, all of us together at noon, we would check in here at zoom at noon o'clock at noon o'clock, noon o'clock <laughs> central time and um, quickly go around and say what we we're going to do. So I might say, I'm going to play classical piano for fun for the next 30 minutes. And uh, Stephanie might say, I'm going to write. And Laura might say, I'm going to draw. And Heidi might say, I'm going to make art. What, what it, Nanda might play uh, guitar, whatever it is. We'll just quickly say what we're going to do. Then we set our timer for 30 minutes, hop off this call. And what we're doing is we're pledging to ourselves and to each other. We're promising, we're holding this space to say for the next half an hour, I'm not going to check my email. I'm not going to get on Facebook. I'm not going to make something to eat or do a load of laundry or any of the other <laughs> million things or reorganize my sock drawer or whatever it is that I could be doing rather than this thing that I really want to be doing for the next 30 minutes. And it's only 30 minutes. So that feels pretty doable. And you've scheduled the time, you know, in the calendar for you and you're telling somebody else that you're holding the space for them as well so 30 minutes we go we do our thing we come back and we just do a quick check-in and what, what I've found and what the women that I work with have found over and over again is that we can accomplish more and 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 more importantly experience more um satisfaction, creative satisfaction in a 30 minute creative oasis state than like a three or four hour morning where you kind of don't, 
have anything specific planned so you've got all the time in the world but then you go ping-ponging from <laughs> thing to thing to thing and so you never really get that kind of satisfaction of a 30 minute um, chunk of dedicated time focused on something that you've really given yourself permission to so that's an example too of a way to find support um, and Heidi, Heidi says, I've been doing this every day since Christmas break. I'm giving yourself time to do your, for creative oasis moments, I'm guessing. Yes. Oh, yay. Good. Very cool. Anybody else have an idea of how you might find support uh, as you're kind of embracing this you that you really want to be and having the creative experiences that you really want to have more of in 2017? Laura, you already, you talked about continuing creating community. So I'm assuming that that would be a good, good place for you. And then Stephanie having your, um, your partnership, uh, power partner with, um, Anna. Ah, yeah. Sharing with friends. So uh, Stephanie says, so, so they can join in. Yeah. Yeah. You know, sometimes it's classes. Um, sometimes, I mean, I know some people that are using apps in order to meditate more or to uh, uh, have more creative time, eat better, or something like that. Um, sharing our time, parallel universe time, right? Uh, that's yeah. Of course, that's that's where I learned it from Jill Badonsky. She she calls it parallel universe time. Um, uh, have an art group. Heidi says, I would like to have an art group connecting with the women's circle. Yeah. So there are things too, like meetups, you know, meetup groups that people create for things like that, like art, art groups or, uh, women's circles, that kind of thing. I have a wonderful, uh, for accountability for me being who I want to be in 2017. And this is a thing that I've had for a long time, but it's growing is a, a small group, a workout group that I work out with on Monday, Wednesday, and Fridays. And, you know, it's the kind of thing that I know how to do a jumping jack. I know how to do a push up, but um, I, I'm much more likely to do that. Um, and it's a lot more fun when I show up um, with this uh, other group of, of women and we have um, shared energy and conversation and we kind of um, support each other and cheer each other on. And so that's an example of a way to, to find support. Um, and I hope that even, you know, even just, um, even just the, the newsletters, I hope that the, that the midweek oasis moments every once in a while will give you like a little jolt of inspiration or motivation to do the things that, that you want to do. And the reminder that there's somebody, somebody out there in the world who is, is cheering you on and wanting you to have this, um, these creative experiences and really express yourself and be the authentic creative you that you, that you have inside that you want to be. Um, so the next prompt is one way I can allow myself to enjoy more creative time uh, in 2017 is to, and so is there uh, an example, you know, was the creative oasis date that I used? That's, that's one. Um, <laughs> Heidi, that must be it. Thank you for inspiring. Thank you, Heidi, for telling me that and for, for sharing that. Um, I will share another tip as far as the second prompt goes about ways to allow myself more creative me time. A productivity tool or experience that I've been using um, for the last couple of years that works really well for me, and I'm, I didn't come up with it, I read it in an article somewhere, is a 53-minute slash 17-minute, and I don't even know that those were the original time frames and it's whatever works for you, but a larger chunk of time and my larger chunk of time is 53 minutes that somebody did an experiment that found that that's kind of the, the maximum for most people amount of time that you can really sit down and focus and, and, and get some really good work done. Um, before you start, you know, maybe thinking about other things. So I set a timer for any work that I'm going to be doing, um, any writing work or, or creative work for Creative Oasis for 53 minutes or, or, you know, paying bills or whatever it is that I need to really be focused on. And so it's kind of like a Creative Oasis date in that for the next 53 minutes, that's what I'm going to be doing. I, try, I don't get on Facebook. I don't check email. I just do whatever I say that I'm going to do for 53 minutes. But then when the timer goes off for my 17 minute break, then I can check on Facebook or check email or get a drink of water or go outside or whatever I want to do. And so I've tried to start using those 17 minute breaks 
more often as a creative me time experience. So sitting down at the piano and playing piano for 17 minutes or, or, you know, doing a coloring sheet or so I really, you know, since it's something that I'm already kind of building into my work week on a fairly regular basis, I think using those 17 minute um, breaks more wisely for me and how, and really thinking about how do I want to use those instead of checking on Facebook every time, <laughs> you know, maybe something a little different is saying, okay, I'm going to at least use one or two of those 17 minute um, time periods uh, today to just do something purely one of these uh, creative experiences that I want to have. Does anybody else have an idea that for you might be a way that you could allow yourself to experience more creative me time? I know that's one that um, we all tend to struggle with. Ooh, good one. Stephanie says, say no to projects I don't want to do. Yes. So becoming discerning, right? Really checking in with ourselves. And, and this all ties in with the who do I want to be authentically? Who do I, who is the real me? And how do I want to express that in the world? Well, if we're saying yes to everything, if we're saying yes to things that don't feel like something we really want to be doing, then we're not, right? We're, we're not expressing our true self. And one of the things I love to remind my clients is when you're saying no to somebody else, you're really just saying yes to yourself. And we can't say yes to everybody. Else. So one barometer that I try to use is I have this little book that somebody gave me one time called Hell, Hell Yes. And I kind of think like I kind of said intuitive check if like, do you want to do this thing? And if it feels like a hell yes, I'm going to do it, even if it seems like maybe I shouldn't or I won't have time or money for it. On the other hand, if I have to kind of think about it and think how I'm going to squeeze it in and think or it starts to feel like I should do that, I really should or that person's going to be upset with me if I don't. All, once those kind of thoughts start coming in, I, I realize that's that's something I should probably say no to. And it takes practice, and it especially takes practice if you're a person who likes to, you know, please other people and be and be kind to other people. And and sometimes we have um, issues with boundaries, and so that's another thing that I really work with a lot of my clients about is just kind of firming up those boundaries um, and realizing that it's okay to say no to, to projects and to people that you don't want to. Oh, great one. Heidi says, putting ourselves on the calendar. Yes, absolutely. So, so really scheduling in your creative time um, as if you would a doctor's appointment or a dentist appointment or a lunch date with a friend and showing ourselves and showing yourself that much respect, the same amount that you would show, you know, a friend or any other, you know, if, if the cable guy comes, says he's going to be there at seven and, and to 10 and he's not there till 11, you know how that makes you feel. So, so kind of, you know, scheduling that time for yourself. I still write down on my calendar. Well, I'm, and now I'm showing my Ludite ways, but I still have a paper calendar. I, I'm a very much a paper and pen gal. I can't do the, the computer thing yet, but, um, and may never be able to, <laughs> but, um, I still write down every day, um, meditation, morning pages, exercise, yoga, the, the self care things that I want to do, even though I know I'm going to do them and they're a habit now, there's something about writing it on my calendar and I admit I like to check it off after I've done it as well, but there is something I think to the, um, uh, power of writing it on my calendar and knowing that it holds a place um, <clears throat> just just like a, a coaching call has a place on my calendar um, somebody else says put put on music while I'm starting a project yes for sure that um, that that relates back to one of my three favorite que um, questions that I have my um, people I work with ask themselves if they're ever starting to feel stuck or if they want to um, need a little help doing something. And those are, how can I make this easier or more doable, which is often breaking it down using Kaizen and breaking it down to a smaller, more doable step. How can I make this more fun or enjoyable? And to Laura's point, that could be something as simple as turning on music or lighting a candle or opening the window or going outside on the patio instead of working my office if it's a beautiful day. And then the third one is how can I make this more meaningful? And that could be doing something in somebody's honor, like maybe, uh, maybe playing a song on the piano in honor of somebody. Um, Nancy says, while doing focus work, don't answer the phone. 
and harder, don't worry about who's calling and what it's about, right? Um, kind of getting to that point of thinking, and, I, and I, this is something that I've had to train myself with, especially with my parents getting older, and, um, and they just moved closer to town. So when my mom started having some memory issues, every time my dad would call, I would pick up the phone on the first ring. And, but you know, it wasn't an emergency every time he called. So I, I had to train myself too to go, you know what? Can, I, if, if it's not an emergency, I don't have to pick it up right now. He'll call me back. There's so many ways for people to get a hold of us now, right? With calling and texting and email and everything that if it's really an emergency, they'll call back or they'll find a way to get in touch with you. So kind of just giving ourselves permission to say, I don't have to answer it on the first ring. I don't have to answer it at all. They'll leave a message and I can finish what I'm doing right now, especially for using those chunks of time, you know, and, and realizing, you know, I'll, I'll be ready to, to talk to this person in an hour or something like that. Maybe that could help as well. And Nanda says, scheduled travel time between clients or appointments, even if you're at home. Oh, nice. Like maybe like going out for a walk or um, some kind of virtual travel time. That sounds, that sounds good. You guys are doing great, coming up with great ideas for this. So the last prompt is something, and this is, this is where it's going to play into to the coloring mandala sheet that maybe you've been playing with here. And that is choosing, I know a lot of people for, for the new year choose a word or two or three words. Um, and sometimes that's a little overwhelming, but, but I, wanna, I want you to lower the pressure on yourself as far as this is concerned and just choose one word or image that describes the way you'd like to feel in 2017. This is not the end all be all word. You can choose another word if you want to at some point, but just for our purposes today, uh, what would that word be? And then to, to write that word in the middle of your mandala, um, because we use these, you know, these uh, things in Kaizen Muse, you know, uh, reminders, and they can be visual reminders, and they can be words, uh, it can be a combination of both, but there's something really powerful about um, supporting and seeing again and again um, a reminder that you know, of what it is you want in life and um, staying committed to that and um, just just seeing it, just ha having it in front of you every day. And so for me, for 2017, my word, my word is freedom. So how I want to feel is free and that there's many ways that that applies in my life. And so just writing the word free in the middle of my mandala, which I'm going to finish coloring later on today for a Creative Oasis break. And I'll probably cut this out and I'll probably tape it uh, somewhere in front of my computer or, or in my desk area or I don't do, I don't have stuff on my refrigerator anymore, but um, <laughs> oh, I have a little cork board in my office that, that might probably be where it goes. But just, just putting that somewhere um, where you can see it at least every day, like for the next week or so, as long as you want to. But, and I hope that that will then like help you kind of um, think of and remember what we've, some of the things that we've talked about on today's call and kind of remind you of how you want to feel and, um, and some of the ways that you can feel that way. So, um, oh, oh, I'm sorry. I'm going to try to share something else with you real quick here. Um, this is me trying to do something, uh, computer literate. This is why I use zoom because it's so easy to use and, um, and, I'm tr when I'm trying to do two things at once on the computer, it's like kind of scary. It doesn't really work very well. So let me see here. The thing that I want to share with you, I'm going to put in the chat room. I'm going to put a uh, link over in the chat box there. And okay, look at how technical I'm being. I'm going to do this. I've just copied a link and I'm going to put it in the chat box. And um, this is, this is a link to share information about the new group that I have coming up called the Creative Oasis Discovery Sessions. Um, and it's going to open up to the public tomorrow. Today it's just to the people on this call and the people that signed up for this call. And um, I have a group. There's only 15 people, so we're going to keep it small. We're going to be meeting like this on, in a Zoom room um, once a week for six weeks. Uh, it'll either just be the group sessions or I have, I'm offering five uh, 
sessions where the people will be in the group with us for the guided group sessions, but then also have three one-on-one -on -one coaching calls for a little more personalized um, uh, just attention and accountability and, and personalized work with things that you might not be, feel comfortable working with a group. And that's the bonus. So if, if this is something that you're interested in and you do sign up um, and to join us today by midnight, then I'm going to give anybody who does that an extra one-on-one -on -one session with me with, with a follow-up. So that's $125 value. Um, and yes, I will email the link as well. Um, so, and does anybody have any questions about the, anything we've talked about today or about the, um, the group that's coming up, the, that'll be starting in just a couple weeks here, the discovery sessions, feel free to take some time to, to take it in. And, um, if you do have any questions, you can email me today. We could even hop on a call if, if, if you want to talk by phone for a little bit about it, I'd be happy to do that sometime today as well. Um, and what I want to offer to you is to, you know, really take, take, take a look at your discovery guide that, that you came up with. Take a look at your word and um, come up with one small step, one small experience, one thing that feels really delightfully doable to you. And, and let that be your focus uh, for the next week. Uh, something that you can do in as little as five or 10 minutes. And even if it's just awareness, even if it's something as simple as reading over the answers you came up with on the discovery guide, um, I promise you that it's going to start to, um, ideas and possibilities are going to start to come into your mind uh, more easily. And you're going to start to give yourself permission to experience these things more easily. And and, um, and I'm happy to support you, uh, you know, just in the group, Facebook, in the Creative Oasis Facebook, um, and then through Midweek Oasis Moments. I would, of course, love to have you be a member of the Discovery Sessions, but if that's not something that's for you right now, I, I'm just so grateful that you came and had this experience with me today. Um, I really enjoyed meeting you all, and um, thank you for being so forthcoming and sharing your answers and um, your, your thoughts. Again, any, any questions that anybody might have before we sign off today? Thank you so much. I really, I really was so great to meet all of you. Yay. And see some of your faces. <laughs> I know they're all beautiful faces. I just didn't get to see them all, but I really, really appreciate it. And, um, and I will send the recording to you. So if you want to look at this again, or if you want to, um, you know, fast forward to parts, how this will work, I will, I will tell you this, this, so I'm going to upload this, um, recording into uh, the dro uh, Dropbox that I have and I'll send the link to that and it's going to ask you to download. It'll sh show you like the first 15 minutes I think you can watch, but if you want to download the whole entire um, video recording, you're welcome to. You'll just need to download it to your computer or if you have a Dropbox, you can zip it right to your Dropbox and, and it'll work that way and I can help you do that if you have any issues with that. So um, thank you uh, Heidi and Stephanie and Nancy and Nanda and Laura, I feel like, remember the romper room lady? I see, <laughs> I don't know if anybody else remembers romper room, but I see Stephanie and I see, uh, I really enjoyed the hour with you. Thank you so, so much. And um, I look forward to staying connected with you and uh, have a great rest of your day. I hope that maybe you'll give yourself permission to spend the next 10 or 15 minutes finishing up your mandala and, and doing some more contemplating. Yay. <laughs> that looks great, Heidi. Okay. Thanks so much. Have a great rest of your afternoon, everybody. Bye.